So as the years go by, do 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 do, these movies will never die. Do do do, watching Toy Stories one through three. Here's a kablog from me. Do do do, yeah, here's a kablog for me. Okay, uh, so it is uh, uh, the evening on uh, June nineteenth, Wednesday night. Um, by the time that you're hearing this. Uh, full video, uh, I will have seen Toy Story 4 uh, the following week. Hey, just kidding, I haven't seen it yet, so please don't spoil Toy Story 4 for me in the comments. I haven't seen it yet, I decided that I'm gonna do a separate curve vlog for that, sorry! Uh, while uh, Summer Games Done Quick is going on, and perhaps our charity auction has already started, I, I, I do believe. But uh, I wanted to do another one of those little travel log curb blogs. Uh, hopefully this one won't be like a, you know, a, a couple followed by a giant chunk at the end, like the Kingdom Hearts 3 one that I did a while ago. But um, I've just rewatched Toy Story 1 for the first time in a couple years now. I can't remember quite how long it's been since I watched it. But um, I watched this movie religiously as a kid. Uh, I, I, I want to say I think I might have seen it in theaters maybe like four or five times when it was first out. Uh, probably ran the uh, VHS tape of mine uh, in, into into like destruction of, of like over using the tape or whatever. Uh, played the uh, Sega Genesis version of the Toy Story One video game quite a bit as well. So uh, and I had uh, actually the entire uh, or, or not not the entire because I'm sure there's tons of other stuff I didn't get, but I, I had all of the characters collected in toy form in, in some way uh, that they had released in toy form at the time. So I had Slinky and Rex and Woody Buzz, et cetera, all the usuals, RC, you know. And, uh, yeah, so I was, I was really, it's weird, like, you know, not, not to the same extent as I was with something like Pokemon or Power Rangers or, or, or whatever. But, uh, yeah, I, I, was, I was, like, really, really big into Toy Story when it first came out. Like, I was, I was like, a, a little obsessed for, for a short while. Same thing with uh, Bugs Life shortly after. I had a lot of toys for that movie as well. But, um, yeah, you know, it, it's funny because... It, it's it's weird my experience with rewatching this because it's one of those movies that like and I'm sure probably a lot of Americans who grew up with this you know twenty some odd years ago now twenty five I think even Jesus uh, it, it's weird when you have a movie like this that is just so iconic and so rewatchable and so memorable that you basically know the entire movie like by heart like I think if if you if you put a gun to my head i could probably recite every line of the movie like almost word for word from start to finish i've seen it so many times and uh, and there's not very many movies i have like that. I, I, it's funny though i think i did even have a moment where like uh if i, I think if i heard it right, uh, right when they're uh, listening in on the what the birthday presents are it's like uh, uh the next the next present it's uh, it's bed sheets who invited that kid i think forever i thought he was saying oh it's it's from benshi like, like that was his name was the kid's name was Benchy. And then Mr. Potato Head's like, who invited that kid? Like, just like, it was some joke. I'm like, oh, the, oh, the annoying kid that we don't like or something. And I was like, oh, is that what it's supposed to be? And then I realized, oh no, it's bed sheets. In fact, it's probably what was coming in that, uh, that, that too long, uh, like, you know, oh, there's a little one right there. Ah, the, the long, uh, birthday present the kid was buying or, or was bringing with them or whatever. It was the, the Buzz Lightyear bed sheets that replace the uh the cowboy bed sheets that uh, Andy has but uh um also this by this movie this is this is such a whatever like nitpick thing but this movie has a lot of the um uh eye blinking separately from each other thing going on <laughs> uh i i think that that was kind of part of the charm for like the fact that they were all these kind of plasticky toy characters but like i think even Andy does it like the human characters do it too and it's like ah uh, maybe okay whatever um, it's funny, even even seeing the the little brief preview of um, of uh, uh, what's it called uh, the uh, 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 oh, the the opening scene from Toy Story Four, where like you know we see Andy playing with the toys and everything, and just seeing how much better his model looks <laughs> compared to the uh, kind of gross CG baby abomination of uh, from the original movie or whatever. I mean, it was you know it was it was at the time they even I remember that they even said that they chose to do a story about about toys. Uh, haha, because uh, of the fact that CG just made everything kind of look inherently plasticky to begin with. But yeah, still an incredible movie. It, it's it's a it's a weird thing again to experience because I'm just like, I, I I almost experience it like I'm not really watching it. I'm just sort of like, oh yeah, I'm just reciting it. It's just like it just the whole thing just kind of plays on autopilot in my brain because I just know every like 
shot every expression, every joke, every line so well, but it, it's still, it's still great. I think that definitely the stories of, um, and looking back now, even without having uh, rewatched uh, two and three yet, I think that the actual stories of the, the sequels uh, were overall better. Uh, but this is still a classic. It's like, it's like the way that I, I equate to liking the, uh, you know, uh, Paper Mario 64 uh, compared to like Thousand Year Door and uh, Super Paper Mario, like, like in, in accordance of, I like the simplicity and the straightforwardness and the comedy of it and everything, you know, that, that works really well for it. Yeah, I plan on rewatching uh, all of them, maybe some of the shorts and stuff in between uh, before I go, I, go, I go check out four as this kind of a little bit of a retrospective. So yeah, see you in the next one. Date line, June 21st. I actually watched Toy Story 2 uh, the previous night uh, after I recorded the uh, first part that you just heard a second ago. But I stayed up until like 4 in the morning and I didn't feel like recording it immediately afterwards. So it's been a full day. Uh, bigger and better than the first one. You know, Toy Story 2, I feel like, is the one that kind of, at least in, in my recent experience from people, like uh, between one, 1, 2, and 3 is the one that gets like the least amount of credit because uh, 1 is the one everybody remembers because they saw it a million times and 3 had so many like incredibly emotional moments but it, it, really other than the the uh, when somebody loved me sequence which is an amazing sequence it's like legendary um, people don't seem to talk about 2 very much but 2 is a really really solid movie I, I think it's like just just as much and it, it helped push already in that direction I think uh, even further of like because in the first one even like the the big pivotal moment for like Woody and Buzz when like um, you know, like when they're in, uh, Sid's room and, and then Buzz finally like kind of wakes up and realizes like, okay, this is great. Like there's even some things about that moment that are kind of like, like when he's like, but why would Andy want a toy like me? And it's like, oh, you're just kind of jumping to that. Like if it was like, well, what does Andy care about me? Like, you know, but, but I, I feel like the, um, the development and the moral and the purpose of like what Woody's going through in, in two and, and seeing, you know, how Buzz is, is, uh, you know, the one that kind of keeps him grounded now, uh, when he almost turns to a, a sort of dark path of being behind glass, uh, that in and of itself, I think is, is a really, really good, uh, juxtaposition that they had. And granted it only works because of the first movie that came before it. So the first one is, is a good setup for that. And I, I still love it for what, for what it is, but two is bigger and better and more emotionally impactful, I find. And uh, by the way, uh, Bullseye is best boy. Can I just say like for a character that gets like, I feel like he gets little to no credit at all as a character, just because like he's, you know, he's pantomime horse boy, but he's so cute and sweet and like, immediately loyal to, to Woody, like a, like a dog, like for, for all that, that's said about Slinky being like Woody's like, you know, right hand man toy forever. And then Buster is like literally a big giant, actual giant puppy to them. Uh, Bullseye is like the, like the most loyal little, like, oh, every time I sh that he does like anything on screen in that movie, I'm just like, oh, I love you. Man. Um, Jesse's hysterical and Joan Cusack is brilliant on her. And, uh, and even the prospector, like, I, I almost wish, and I feel like maybe the reason they pushed him as like being a jerk at the end is like to make him more of an actual like villain villain, I guess. But I, he's kind of a, a tragic character that like he was literally designed and built to be, you know, like this kind of crappy hated on character that was like a comedy relief from another era. And even, even back then, no kid wanted to play with them compared to other toys. And, uh, you know, and then like the closest thing he can get to any kind of like happiness is the prospect of being on display at a museum uh, and being adored by people as a result of that because he'll never actually be played with. But then I think about like, oh, you know, but he also kind of got a happy ending in, you know, in, in the long run because, you know, if he's with this kind of like, you know, different girl who's an, oh, she's an artist. And like, he'll get played with. And even if he's going to get his face drawn on or whatever, like maybe he'll come to appreciate actually being played with by a kid. So yeah, all the gags are funny. The story beats are all perfectly placed in time to the, the, the journey of it. I remember I was at a, I was at a party once a few years ago. It was back when I was in college and I met a guy who was like an old school animator and he, he had this kind of cynical view that like uh, Pixar movies are like a bunch of characters like run around with their arms scraggling about you know, from one place to another, and then they panic, and then they do the same thing, and like, and they like run with their arms flailing around like an idiot to another place, and then they keep doing that over and over until they get to the place where they need to go at the end. And I'm like, I mean, yeah, that's that's a really like beaten down way to to think of like journey stories, I guess, like like lit literal traveling stories, um, which 
I think that thus far, uh, you know, Toy Story 1, 2, and 3, and probably 4 from what I can see of it, uh, all have that same kind of thing of being good, uh, you know, journey stories in that sense. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, 2 is excellent. I uh, still love it dearly. And um, now I have 3 to look forward to. So, oh boy, here comes the emotional roller coaster of that. <laughs> Dateline, 4 o'clock in the morning on June 21st. I finished Toy Story 3 and I cried 7 million freaking times. I don't know why I'm not cursing. Probably because I'm so affected by the wholesomeness of these movies. God. So I, I saw this uh, with Martin uh like when it came out. I think we were at like Anime Next or something and we went with a bunch of people and it was insane. Uh, and I think literally like, like the, the, the catchphrase of the weekend of, of that, of that year was like just us screaming Toy Story 3 with Uncle Yo, if anybody remembers one of those old videos that Martin put up. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's, it's brilliant. I mean, what, what's even to say? I did, did, for one thing, it's, it's, um, it was brilliant, uh, conceptually from the beginning, uh, in terms of, you know, uh, having the, the real time amount of time that had passed between the years that they did, uh, you know, the, the, for Toy Story 2 up until Toy Story 3, like having that amount of time pass was a brilliant idea to begin with. Uh, the unexpected twist of also making it a, a prison break movie. And I mean, you know, granted like plenty of the advertisements with like, we're busting out of here and all that, uh, you know, like, like not, not necessarily that it's such a twist or anything, but the fact that like, it's a, it's another, you know, it's at, at its core it's the same as with all toy story movies including again just what i know of of four from the trailers of woody having to learn a lesson of some kind while going on a, a like literal and figure as much as a figurative journey in terms of just like moving around and all that uh and and you know just the setting being different and this time of course it being the uh, sunny side um daycare and everything uh, Lotso is uh, a, a really compelling villain. Uh, would have loved to even just see him be explored a little bit further than, than you know, as he was uh, in the movie. But um, and his his uh, his end was uh, I, I think I think even more than what he deserved. But it was uh, it was fitting enough of just like well, <laughs> you you'll you'll be surrounded by friends. At least you won't be. But uh, that said, I mean, yeah, the, the fact that his ending, even though it's like ha ha, <laughs> screw him, it's it's. Uh, not not a horrifying enough fate uh compared to some of the other moments i mean i mean still like the you know the the tear jerking moments of not just you know the ending with andy giving away the uh uh the all the toys to bonnie and everything and by the way, side note bonnie's precious child must be protected oh my god she's so wholesome i smile every time she's on screen uh and then um and then also obviously the 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 the, in, the incinerator scene which still made tears flow down my face <laughs> Like just just as much as it did back when we saw it, um, but but even even then too, like it, it's a it's a pretty terrifying part. But actually, I think the scene of the the preschool kids playing with the toys uh, and and like beating the ever loving crap out of them, I, I think is actually the most horrifying thing I've seen in all the Toy Story movies. Is just that part by itself. God, what else? Uh, M Michael Keaton Ken is hysterical. <laughs> Um, and I love the, the, the Toy Story, Jody Benson, like version of Barbie. I know that that's not like, you know, how she is as a character Gen generally, excuse me, I'm going to take up, um, everything. Oh God, Toy Story 3 is so good. Oh, it's so good. Oh my God. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I, I probably got to check out, uh, some of the, um, the, the shorts. I don't know if I'll, uh, cause I'm probably just going to put this up like today and, and just, here's my, thoughts on the original three Toy Story movies, but I'll probably check out some of the, uh, the, you know, the, the Toy Story Terror and the, um, what's it called? The, what's the other one? I forget. The, the, the shorts that came out after three and, and everything that had some of the other Bonnie's toy characters featured and everything. Oh, the, the, the Toy Story that, uh, time forgot or whatever. Um, yeah, but you know, coming back, the, the, these, these characters are just like so incredibly well-defined they're so incredibly well performed and animated and executed in every conceivable way, you know, like like the the, the main cast in particular, the the ones that survived the cut by uh, Toy Story three in particular, um, you know, the just 
seeing them get to do anything uh, is is incredible. But but really really seeing because and it's weird because I didn't think too hard about it even though it's so obvious. But it wasn't until like I started rewatching all these is that it really is about Woody's development and I, and I don't know what for has in store for him and nobody better spoil nothing on the comments or I'm gonna be upset. But seeing like the the development that Woody goes through with each successive movie and, 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 you know, kind of listening to, from what I understand is this sort of inner voice telling him what to do and guiding him through his life. It, it, it as an adult with, with kind of how my, you know, cause they're all incredible movies and they're well-structured stories. But again, as you know, as, as I've become this snob with, with the way that I consume movies nowadays, I, again, I always think about like, what is the takeaway? What is the point? What is the moral, et cetera. And, and I think that I'm, I'm, I'm even kind of trying to find like, you know, the, the sort of humanistic equivalence of the feelings that these toy characters go through. We're like, you know, there isn't like a one-to-one -one kind of thing. But I think that trying to find a sense of purpose in life and like something that you know deep down is like what you're supposed to do. And also it kind of combined with a sense of family. You know, it, it's like the existence of the toy characters, it, it's, it's, a, it's a combination of like, you know, absolute dedication and duty to a job. Uh, combined with the, the the sense of loyalty that one often can have, uh, you, know, you know, not always, but but you know, typically, hopefully, to one's family, um, you know, because it's like for them, their owner, whether it's Andy or or in this case now Bonnie, it's like they are the absolute highest priority, and they and they always put them before themselves, and uh, you know to see that like that's something that kind of persists throughout the whole thing that it's like it's about like this person needs me I, I live for them you know and the fact that like that viewpoint it seems like it's going to be you know it's it's challenged it's been challenged more and more and more successively I realize with each one because with two it's like he's going to go to college and he's going to leave you he's like yeah that's fine but I'm going to deal with it he's going to college and he's leaving you and he's like it's fine I'll deal with it uh and then you know I don't know what the setup is going to be for four. Um, I am really tempting people to to spoil me in the comments, and I hope, really hope nobody does because I'm not going to be seeing it until, until Tuesday of next week. So please don't. If you've seen it, please don't be a jerk in the comments. Um, but yeah, but yeah, but but seeing that kind of uh, lineage of of like you know where things are going and and like and how all that 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 sort of like you know that that stubborn. Uh, but but like understandable views, viewpoint that Woody has and, and that he kind of tries to be this sort of guiding light for all the other, uh, uh, you know, his toy family and everything, you know, that in and of itself, I, I find to be really cool. And and um, and, I, and I don't know if four is going to be the end of the whole everything or whatever necessarily, but uh, but to see like, OK, well, you know what, this is this is life. This is, you know, for a lot of people, this is how their life is when like. You know, they have a calling, they have a purpose, they have, you know, responsibilities that they feel that they, they, they just absolutely cannot under any circumstance ignore. Uh, you know, that that is such a strong theme that I respect, you know, for the 25 years that the Toy Story franchise has existed. Uh, I have undying respect for Pixar in, in being able to do that. It's been a it's been a firm it's been a, a good inspiration again, you know, in, in, in the way that often I think back to like when I saw Tangled and how inspiring that was. Uh, you know, it's it just in terms of like my current sensibilities as a filmmaker and a storyteller, like marathoning through the, the, the Toy Story trilogy again uh, in accordance with f uh, four coming up and everything. I th I'm, I'm glad that I did this. It, it feels good. Hopefully I'm going to be emotionally prepared for this. But yeah, those are my thoughts and I'm sticking to them. Um, thanks. Uh, uh, tomorrow I've got the uh, June um, Terrain of Magical Expertise. Uh, update video coming up. So, uh, we're going to be doing a, a charity auction. Uh, details to follow about that, so uh, keep an eye out. And um, uh, Summer Games Done Quick is happening uh, starting on Sunday, so enjoy that. Uh, please donate to either or or both if you want. And uh, yeah, uh, I've got a lot on my plate. <laughs> Things are going a little nuts right now, but uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing my best and trying to stay productive and everything. So anyway. That's it. Uh, thanks for listening uh, in the comments below. Please, for the love of God, don't spoil the Toy Story 4. Please, please don't. Instead, uh, comment with your thoughts and things about uh, Toy Story in general. Uh, the, the original trilogy, that is, of uh, 1, 2, and 3. Uh, let me your thoughts, your favorites, 
favorite moments, favorite characters, and why. Do your homework, kids. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so that's it. Bye.